Hey Raptors, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. If you're new around these parts, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It does mean a lot to us. Today we are going to be talking about the 1660 Super from Zotac. It's the Amp Edition. It's designed and primarily targeted towards gamers, but we are going to be taking a look at it for mining today. And we're going to pit it against some of our favorite cards. We're going to see what kind of hash rates we get. We're going to push it in both Windows and Hive and just see how well it can actually do. I'm really excited to get my hands on this card as a number of viewers have asked me to give a Zotac model a try. This is the first one we're gonna have here in the Hashraptor Studios. So let's jump right in. Let's take a look at what we got. Here we go. Today we are reviewing the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super Amp Edition from Zotac. The 16 series is a favorite on this channel for its efficiency, but we have yet to test any of the Zotac models. Zotac is often chosen by miners because of its performance for price, and we are going to see how that stands up in benchmarks. We passed on questions from our audience, and Zotac provided answers that we will get to shortly. Before we jump into the benchmarks, let's review where the 1660 Super fits into the lineup for miners. To this day, the GTX 10 series is a staple for miners with older cards or those delving into the used card market. The Zotac 1660 Super fits somewhere between the GTX 1060 and 1070 models. While it doesn't include ray tracing and deep learning, which we don't need in the mining segment that's found in the 2000 series, it does support the Turing architecture and upgraded GDDR6 memory, bringing it in with the 1660 Ti just below the RTX 2060 in the NVIDIA lineup. As for AMD mining, the best comparison is the RX 580 or the RX 5700 for a step up in price of around $100 or more depending on when you're looking and depending on what state the world is in. With the 3000 series rumor circulating and announcements expected from NVIDIA between now and August, we are eager to see if the 16 series gets a makeover with the rest of the lineup. Leaked specs of the 3080 imply the 20 series will either be pushed out completely or we will see significant price drops. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's do a quick refresh on the specs. The 1660 Super has 1,408 CUDA cores, 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running at 14 gigabits per second versus the 12 gigabits per second found on the 1660 Ti model. The Zotac Amp Edition includes one HDMI port and three display ports, a metal wraparound backplate, upgraded heat pipes, two 90 millimeter fans, and factory overclocking out of the box. The 16 series stands out with miners who are looking for top of the line efficiency, budget price point, strong resale value, ease of setup, and wide variety of capable algos. Okay, now that we have our overview to set the stage and refresh complete for experienced miners, let's jump into our hash rate testing. We should note that the review unit we received from Zotac did have Micron memory. Anytime you compare hash rates to a model with Samsung memory, you aren't going to get the same results. And always keep in mind that all silicon behaves differently, even within the same models from the same manufacturer. First, we'll take a look at Ethash in Windows using Phoenix Miner 5.0b, where we compare the Zotac 1660 Super to the EVGA Super SC Ultra. In Windows, it was a virtual tie, which is a recurring theme in this review, with both topping out at 29.6 mega hash per second at around 70 watts. When overclocking with Afterburner, both cards behaved identically, allowing the core clock to be pushed to plus 90. We consistently crashed the machine at plus 100 on the core clock. On the memory, we were able to push this as far as the TI models, upwards of plus 900 while keeping a stable rig. It is worth noting, at plus 1000 memory, the rig crashed on a consistent basis. That being said, these results gave us an impressive efficiency of 0.42 megahash per watt, among the best of any in the NVIDIA lineup. 
However, if you are willing to roll the dice primarily on Ethash and Ethereum, the 5700 flash with the XT BIOS brings in a whopping 0.53 mega hash per watt for $330 to $400 per GPU. The 5600 XT is closer in price point, but if you are jumping into the AMD lineup, the best bang for your buck is the 5700. Taking a look at Ravencoin's Kapow algo, based off of the much needed ProgPow GPU champion, the 1660 Super is a monster hasher. We tested in Windows using T-Rex 15.7, on the low end at 70 watts with plus zero on the core clock and plus zero on the memory, we hit a respectable 8.9 mega hash per second at 130 kilohash per watt. Keep in mind on Raven, I recommend optimizing your hash rate for an efficiency of at least 120 kilohash per watt. If you are below that, you may need to take a look at your setup. When we bump the Zotac 1660 Super up to 87 watts, keeping zeros on the core clock and memory, the hash rate increased to 11.27 mega hash per second with an efficiency of 129 kilohash per watt. We tested at and above 100 watts, and this is a good time to point out how Kapow and ProgPow respond to overclocking. I've seen repeated statements that Kapow is burning up cables or rigs. You have to know the limitations of the machine you have built, which includes everything from the power supply down to the individual splitter cables. Kapow responds nicely up and down the overclock scale to increases in wattage, and miners get greedy pushing their machines too far. The point being, to a certain extent, Kapow and ProgPow both give you a similar kilohash per watt up and down the scale on most GPUs. The efficiency will peak, but my point is, as we have shown with this Zotac 1660 Super, you can still get similar efficiency at 70 watts, 90 watts, and 110 watts. So stay within the limits of your rig. Lastly on Raven, we wanted to see just how far we could go with this card, so we pushed it to 100% TDP at 122 watts with zeros on the core clock and memory. That gave us a very nice 13.5 mega hash per second, however, with a below recommended efficiency of 110 kilohash per watt. At this higher power setting, the two 90 millimeter Zotac fans running at only 37% kept the card at a reasonably cool 66 degrees Celsius. We then moved on to benchmark Zcoin, Swap, Grin, and Beam, which I'll move through quickly with what we thought was the best result from each. We tested Zcoin using T-Rex version 15.7, getting very impressive results at 1.8 mega hash per second and 20 kilohash per watt. This was tested at 88 watts using plus 50 on the core clock and plus 800 on the memory. We were able to crack two mega hash when pushing the card above 98 watts. Now on to swap, which we tested using G minor version 2.09, where we saw results around 4.67 graphs per second at 0.05 graphs per watt. Afterburner was set to 72% TDP or 87 watts with zero on the core clock and plus 800 on the memory. Next, we tested Grin also using G minor version 2.09, where we hit 2.8 graphs per second and 0.03 graphs per watt. We were overclocked to 73% TDP at 89 watts with plus 80 on the core clock and plus 900 on the memory. Last but not least on the algos tested, we ran hash rates for Beam using G minor version 2.09 where we came in at 22.5 solutions per second or 0.25 souls per watt. Our overclocks were set to 72% TDP at 89 watts with plus 50 on the core clock and plus 800 on the memory. Keep in mind, as I stated earlier, that anytime we push the core clock above plus 100 or the memory above plus 1000, the rig became unstable and crashed. This is almost the identical result we have seen with each of the 16 series cards we have tested, short of the 1660 Ti, which tends to be more stable at the edges. Now moving on to our Hive OS testing, we wanted to pit the Zotac 1660 Super against a wide variety of cards. We felt that Raven's Kapow algorithm was the best way to show the side-by-side -side comparison since it makes the best effort to use all parts of the GPU. In order from top to bottom, we put it up against the Gigabyte 1660 non-Super, the EVGA 1660 Ti Black, single fan edition, the NVIDIA 1070 and 1080 Founders Edition cards, and the EVGA 1080 Ti. We set the three 16 series cards to 90 watts, 
plus 90 on the core clock, and plus 800 on the memory. Here you can nicely see how each card stacks up against one another. First we have the Gigabyte 1660 coming in at 10.83 mega hash per second, then the Zotac 1660 Super at 11.93 mega hash per second, or 0.13 mega hash per watt, and the EVGA 1660 Ti at 12.74 mega hash per second. As you can see, the 1660 Super and TI compete nicely with the 1070 Founders Edition in this test. Lastly, we bumped up the power limit to 110 watts on all three 16 series cards. The Gigabyte 1660 moved to 11.72 mega hash per second. The Zotac 1660 Super topped the 1070 at 13.24 mega hash per second. And the 1660 Ti came out just ahead at 14.09 mega hash per second. Note that at 110 watts, all three 16 series cards pegged their fans out at 99%. The Zotac 1660 Super stayed the coolest of the three at a respectable 68 degrees Celsius. Now it is worth noting that I ran this test in the mining cave on a particularly hot day and the ambient temperature in the room was at 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, just for testing to really put this through the paces. So again, this hive testing shows pretty clearly you get what you pay for in each of these models as you step up the scale. Now, I want to share answers from Zotac regarding some of the questions that our viewers had and they've sent to me over time or it's been posted in comments on previous videos. First up, I actually asked this question just to clarify any differences in the AMP series and the Zotac line versus the other cards. And the response from Zotac was as follows. The AMP series of our graphics cards are usually factory overclocked. There are also some slight improvements in power delivery and stabilization as well. And they also sent over a video which I will play over this as I read through the rest of these questions. Second, inventory on various sites seems hit or miss at times, which is totally understandable considering the supply chain issues globally. Any idea when that situation may improve? And the answer from Zotac was yes, inventory has been very low. The virus pandemic put manufacturing to a temporary halt. We are beginning to ramp back up again. We are expecting some large shipments by July, but nothing is 100%. Shipments can be delayed or what's on board can change suddenly. We do expect inventory levels to improve at least by the end of July, but not for all products. Now I keep doing some Googling. I'm checking prices almost every day, looking for inventory and looking for good deals. And I have seen this particular Zotac Amp Edition pop up several times. It's been in, depending on which site you're looking at, between 229 and 249, which is a fantastic deal, especially under the current situation with all the things that are going on right now in the world. Concerning users having to replace fans from time to time. Zotac's response. Fans are for sure something that comes up a lot. It is one of the first components to go on a graphics card given it's spinning around most of the time. We do offer a standard two year warranty that can be increased by one year for a total of three years in the United States. It can be as high as five years in other regions because Zotac is a global company. Customers just need to make sure to register their graphics cards with us within the first 30 days of purchase to receive the extra years. We have worked to improve our fans with the 16 and 20 series graphics cards, and we will continue to improve with each new generation. We do also offer RMA support as well, so that if the fans do fail, we can get you a working card within the warranty's time frame. So there you go, from time to time I talk to viewers and they tell me that the fans have failed, but perhaps with the 16 series and the 20 series, we've got some upgraded fans and not to mention that we have an upgraded heat exchange system on this 1660 Super Amp Edition with the way that the additional heat pipes have been added along with the heat sink and the vertical movement of air across the entire GPU. So in summary, would we recommend this card? The answer for the Zotac 1660 Super Amp Edition. The price point is fantastic for a brand new GPU. This is an excellent option for beginner miners who want to take their first steps building a rig, or for gamers who want good performance and the option to mine. Veteran miners will appreciate the touring architecture, strong hash rates, amazing efficiency of the 1660 Super, the wide variety of algos available to mine, and the ease of installation and maintenance. 
While we will continue testing the fans and push this card as far as we can, I feel confident in the AMP series upgraded heat pipe and heat sink cooling solution found in the 16 series cards. Not to mention that with the efficiency of this card at lower wattages, you will be regularly running at lower temperatures, thus taking the stress off the fans. There is no BIOS modding and no tweaking as seen in the AMD RX series. And last, but definitely least for miners, is the look of the card. From the stealth jet-like design to the wraparound shroud metallic backplate, the card looks amazing in the rig. And we are so appreciative to Zotac for giving us the opportunity to review this gear. If you like this kind of content, give us a big fat thumbs up, and please hit the links in the video description below. Show Zotac some love for providing this gear to the channel. And we will see you in the next episode, Raptors. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.